So I've decided to record my L67 supercharged engine conversion into my VS Commodore, which is a Series 2 Commodore, came out in 1996, it is manual. It's my track car, I recently killed the Ecotec that was in it, so we're going to you know, do a little bit of an upgrade and put the L67 supercharged engine in. Um, so yeah, as it is, it's got you know the auto transmission. I'm going to take that off and get the get it bolted up to the manual box. Um, I think the power difference in these are Ecotec came out with 170, sorry 147 kilowatts, and this one puts out not that much greater, but about 171 because it's out of the V VY Commodore. Um, but I've bought a 10 psi pulley. I'm going to replace. Yeah, as you can see, I've taken the belt off, taken that out. I've got to get a puller to pull it off. Um, I got the puller over here, or well, the pulley. As you can see, I bought this from Mace Engineering. Seems pretty cool. I think it cost me about. I can't exactly remember. I think it might have cost me about 180 bucks with the belt. Um, I'm using the vy02 sensors because the wiring harness on that model is different to the standard v standard vs um i got a memcal chip from mace engineering it's pretty much just to make the whole thing run well and it changes the power curve and whatnot from not just being up to about four grand then having nothing all the way to six like these engines do um so yeah i'm just going to record and take you through the process i do to get this engine into my commodore and then get it all fired up so i've started with removing the bolts out of the automatic transmission i think there was like six or seven i just got my rattle gun on the end of it and with it out of the engine it makes it a lot easier and yeah so now what i've started to do is pry the gearbox uh the transmission away from the engine and it should be held on by the flex plate at this point now you'll want to just disconnect all the clips from the transmission so there's a couple here there's a couple just wrapped around here 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 and then on the side of the engine you've got a bolt holding the dipstick on and then from there you've got just two oil cooling lines you can see there that run to the transmission now there's just held on by a couple of bolts they look like they're probably 13s or something like that so yeah I'll just get them removed and we'll get on so I disconnected those lines and now pretty much it was just as simple as getting a pry bar in there and just, you know, giving it a bit of a nudge and then grabbing onto the end of the gearbox or transmission and pulling it out. Simple as that. Okay, next step is removing the starter motor. There is a 15mm bolt here and a 15mm bolt here. Once you remove that, you should be able to get it right off. All right, now with the starter motor off, you're going to have to loosen the three 15mm bolts that are connected to the torque converter. Now, this can be a bit tricky, but the way I do it is I get some vice grips, clamp them down to the flex plate, and then eventually it will come to a stop where it can't move anymore along the block. And then you'll just get your breaker bar, put it on the end of the 15mm bolt and then it shouldn't move and you should be able to crack it <clears throat> like so all right now with the torque converter off we can get at the eight 14 millimeter flex plate bolts now with all the bolts out of the torque converter it's pretty simple to get off all you have to do is Grab onto each side of it and sort of just give it a bit of a pull and it'll all come off. So, yeah, let's get onto that. Now, I've still got the vice grips on the flex plate just so it doesn't move. If you can, get yourself a rattle gun. It makes things ten times easier. 
but if you don't have one, a breaker bar will do. Alright, with the flex plate out of the way, it should have come off very easily, like there shouldn't have been any dramas or anything tricky. Now, you got to install a manual pilot bush or spigot bush for the uh, manual conversion. What I've done is I've put a bit of high temp wheel bearing grease at the back of it, not too much, just a little bit. And you want to get it centered in and then just sort of whack it in nice and gently with a rubber mallet. Make sure you get it nice and centered while you're doing this so it goes in nice and evenly. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove the rear main seal which is this thing here. Now this has nothing to do with the manual conversion but when something is exposed like this and you can get to it and you know you can save your hassles later on just say it starts leaking later may as well change it now so you don't have any of those dramas uh, I got this one out pretty easily all I did was get a screwdriver put it there get a hammer bang that all the way to the back when it went to the back I just got this along the side here jimmy it up and it should just come out like so easy as that Installing it's pretty simple as well. All you want to do is get both hands and Evenly press along the sides to get it in nice and evenly then get your rubber mallet and then You know gently tap around the edges to get it in this one's not in all the way I have a little bit more to go, but You know make sure it's all seated nice flush and evenly and there shouldn't be any problems all right, the rear main seal is in and seated nicely. I just thought I'd show you guys what it looks like when it's done, if it can get you a good angle. All right, onto the front of the engine. Now, I mentioned earlier I bought a 10 PSI pulley. I just picked this up from Mace Engineering. It's a 3.4 inch pulley versus the standard 6 PSI pulley. Uh, I think it's about 3.8 inches. The way to remove the belt off the pulley the supercharger is connect a 50 mil socket to the end of this pulley with a breaker bar loosen off like that should be able to get it off easy down the bottom here i just want to mention we have the harmonic balance at the front is for the supercharger pulley the rear is for everything else water pump uh, air conditioning power steering alternator all the rest of that and the way to loosen that belt off is just over here same size socket same exact thing that will loosen off like that now I will be removing this belt as it is very old and will need to be changed but I'm also removing it because I don't need this air conditioning compressor as it is a track car and it won't be necessary for me to have you can go to your local parts store and order the belt set up for the aircon delete kit but you know I've already got one of them I think it only cost me about 40 bucks or something so yeah simple as that <clears throat> to remove the air conditioner compressor there is a 50 millimeter nut here 50 millimeter nut here 30 millimeter bolt here and this clip you need to remove before being able to take off the air conditioning compressor all right, with the air conditioner off, now we're going to attempt to remove the supercharger pulley. What we've done is we've gone down to just the local parts store and picked up one of these pulley removers. Mainly, you know, I've used one of these on a harmonic balancer before, so we thought it would be right for the job, but it's sort of destroying the supercharger pulley because we don't have air, we don't have the load spread evenly enough. So um, we're going to give it a crack anyway because it looks like it's not going to go much anymore. But yeah, we'll see how we go. All right, so we put a fair bit of force on there. As you can see, like it's still quite bent up. But, you know, eventually, anyway. eventually we um, put enough force on it, which it sort of just let go. So now it's just sort of coming off as you can sort of see it's pushed off the uh, bearing quite a bit 
All right, while we have the pulley off, which is just what it looks like when it's off, we're deciding to swap our ignition packs over with MSD ignition. Really only because it was on the other car, the ignition packs are interchangeable between the standard Ecotex and the L67. So, you know, if you have them, you may as well put them on. So we've started to install the pulley onto the supercharger. Now, what you want to do is with these five bolts, you're going to want to tighten them all down so they're all nice and firm onto the backing sort of plate thing it has there. And you're going to want to get a mash, like a mash mallet or a copper mallet or a like leather mallet or whatever, and whack it decently because it's going to require a bit of force and make sure you're putting the force evenly over it so it's sitting you know nice and firm but yeah just take your time make sure it's all even and on straight and you shouldn't have any dramas okay so now this is about as far as you want to hit it in you'll see it sort of comes up to this lip when it comes up to there you'll notice that you can't actually go any further back so when you do that just get your bolt and your washer that was on the original setup and then just install that, tighten it down and then you're ready to put the belt on.